Hi, Pete here from Club Engineer. In this talk group, we're going to look at solving the problem of the water tower. But first of all, let's take a look at how a robot currently handles it. The robot approaches the water tower and, of course, it presses itself up against it and can't get past. It simply can't detect it. What sensors do we have available in the LEGO kit that might help us with the robot detecting the water tower? Well, we've got two. We've got the touch sensor. The robot could move forward and actually touch the water tower. Or we've got the ultrasonic sensor, which will allow the robot to detect an object within a certain proximity. I think we'll give the ultrasonic sensor a go. So next, modify your robot with the ultrasonic sensor mounted on the front. If you need some help with ideas how to do this, go to clubengineer.org slash build instructions and scroll down to the build instructions for CE RaceBot version 01 with two light sensors and the ultrasonic sensor. When you're done, your robot will look something like this. Once you've built your robot, the next problem is to know where to put the hook in the code to detect the water tower and then to execute the code so the robot goes around the water tower. Let's go to the li line following program we were last working on. Two cents a line following. Here's the program. Now, there's a number of places we could put the hook to detect the water tower, but the one I prefer is in here, in the main line following loop, just after the light sensors have been checked and the motors have been activated for the current readings of the light sensors. We're going to use the switch block. So I'm going to drop a switch block onto the sequence beam. I'm going to change the switch block to use the ultrasonic sensor. My ultrasonic sensor is plugged into port 3. Now, the ultrasonic sensor will trigger based on a threshold set in either inches or centimetres. We're going to change it to centimetres. Taking a guess at the value, let's say we want the ultrasonic sensor to trigger and to stop the robot when it detects an object less than 30 centimetres ahead of it. So I'll enter 30 under the distance property. Now for this first part of the program, if the ultrasonic sensor detects an object less than 30 centimetres within the range of the robot, I'd like it to stop the motors. We're running motors A and C, I want to stop them. And I'd like it to stop the execution of the program so we can study how the robot sits. Compile, download and run this and we'll see what we've got. The robot approaches the water tower and ah, it stops and I think it's stopping too far away. Well the switch block is working but the proximity of 30 centimetres needs to be reduced. Let's have a shot at 20. Compile, download and run and the robot approaches the water tower and that looks better. 20 looks good but I think I'd like the robot just to touch closer. So we'll change this one more time to 15. Compile, download and run. The robot approaches the water tower and good. 15 centimeters looks about right. I'm going to use some sticky post-it notes now to put a mark on the tile at the place the robot stopped. This will allow us to move around the water tower code into a MyBlock and to test that code as a standalone module. So let's do that now. We'll select the block that stops the motors and we'll select by holding down the shift key and clicking the left mouse button the block that stops the program. We'll go to the edit menu and we'll select make a new my block. We'll give it a good name. I'm going to call this one water tower. 
capital water, W-A-T-E-R, capital T for tower, T-O-W-E-R. Click finish. And the next G software has messed up the drawing of our sequence beam, so we'll just move the water tower, my block, off the sequence beam and back on to tidy things up. Double click on the water tower, my block, and again, it's uh, the next G software has messed things up a bit, so we'll just move the blocks off the sequence beam and drop them back to tidy things up. We'll go back to the two cents line following program. I'm going to save this using file save as, giving it a new name. File save as two sensor line following hyphen water tower and click save. And finally, finally I'm going to compile, download, run and test this program just to make sure everything's working. The robot approaches the water tower and it stops. Good. Everything's working as it should be. You have a shot at implementing this on your robot and in your code, and then we'll come back in the next talk through and look at the algorithm that'll get the robot to move around the water tower once it's detected its presence. Good luck with your implementation. The material we're covering in these talk throughs is hard, and sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you may find that you're stuck. Often, it only takes a small amount of face-to-face -face help to get you back on track. If you think you'd benefit from face-to-face -face help, then open your web browser and type clubengineer.org slash help. You'll see a list of times and places where face-to-face -face help is available. At these sessions, you'll get all the help you need to get back on track. You may also meet like-minded young engineers such as yourself for collaborating on projects down the track. Face-to-face -face sessions are run over the school holidays and after school during term time. They're available for all ages from years 5 to year 12. We also run face-to-face -face sessions for teachers and mentors. We'd love to meet you at one of these sessions and learn what you have been building.